Transport. Good morning, good morning, members of the media, and let me welcome you again to the Ministry of Works and Transport for yet another time to again correct the records on the misinformation that is continually being placed in the public domain about the acquisition of ferries to service the Seabridge to Tobago. This morning, I have with me, as mentioned, the members from NIDCO and the chairman of the Port Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. And we're simply here this morning to clarify yet again some misinformation put in the public domain by starting with uh, members of the, the, the opposition and the conversation being carried by some of the operatives who, in my opinion, want to ensure that the sea bridge is continually um, affected by inefficiencies in the, the service by the, the vessels and so. But I want to remind the population as to what brought us to this point. I have to go back to what brought us here, because if we don't understand how we came here, then, then it might be challenging for us to accept the fact that there are some people who do not want us to get out of here. This government brought in two passenger ferries way back, I think it's 2006, 2007. Those ferries were the TNT Express and the TNT Spirit. Those vessels, when they came in, were maintained by a company called Bay Ferries. And for a large uh, part of the, 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 the service, those vessels were serving this country in a very acceptable manner. Somewhere along the line in 2013, a decision was taken by the Port Authority on the advice of I don't know who, that we should get rid of Bay Ferries and we can handle the operations here locally. Bay Ferries had two contracts renewed for three years and from 2013, that decision was taken to reduce it to two years, then to one year, and plans in place to replace them with our local maintenance. We know what happened after that. Once that decision was taken, the vessels were not maintained the way they're supposed to be maintained because you had a company who knew that they were on their way out. And that is when the vessel started to break down on us. By 2016, that plan had taken root. The ferries were no longer here. And there were no... <coughs> I mean, there was no good day for the Port Authority and the Sea Bridge and the TTIT since then. Subsequent to that, the government came out very openly and said that we have to replace our ferries. The, the, the TNT spirit went into dry dock. It spent almost nine months because of the extent of the damage due to the lack of the maintenance and proper maintenance. It cost us something like about 60 or 70 million dollars to repair that vessel and to bring it back into service. After that, we had the express that had to go into dry docking. Based on the cost of the express, we, we felt, and on the advice of the technical team, it was not worth the while to bring that vessel back into service. Government announced then that we had three uh, plans for the sea bridge to get it back up. And it was first we went out for a vessel. This is when we, we, we got the Galleon Passage. That was the short-term plan. We announced then that we had a medium-term plan, which was to go out for a lease vessel, which is where we are at now. And the long-term plan was the acquisition of two brand new fast ferries, which have already been done. What we are hearing now in the public domain and from the, the opposition and people opposed to this government that this was some secret deal. And we just spring this on them that a vessel is coming at the end of me. I just want to draw your attention to, and I said on several occasions, I as minister announced the three plans that we had. 
The Prime Minister did the same. I announced that in the Parliament, and there's a little clip that I want you to take a look at where I announced that at the conversation with the Prime Minister in Tobago. I also answered questions in the Parliament about the government's plan. So this misinformation being placed in the public domain by people opposed to the government that this is a secret deal. I heard a opposition MP saying on the news last night, this is a secret deal. Nobody knew anything about this. That is simply not true. That is simply not true. The government have always kept the population informed as to the plans going forward to fix the sea bridge. The opposition also said, and some of their spokesperson, and I don't know where they're getting the information from, and strange enough, okay, they, what you're seeing on the screen there is the conversation with the Prime Minister in 2018, where I stood up on a question from the floor and told the gathering, which comprised the business community. They really could for the Guardian passage arrived in Trinidad and Tobago. What is going to happen next week, the Guardian Passage is going to do its trial run to Tobago, and if everything goes well, we're hoping that uh, by the third week, the vessels should be put into work. That will give us two vessels in Tobago. In today's newspaper, you'd see an ad out for another fast ferry. That ad will be out for two months, and we are hoping that we'll be able to put into service a third ferry to do the inter-island. Yeah, that will be a, a lease arrangement for two years, and the cabinet did announce that the government is going out for the purchase of two brand new passenger fast ferry. So we will have three vessels operating. Once the two new ferries come in, then we will replace two of the older vessels. So we should have working three brand new vessels with a plan to replace the vessels long before they ever get to the position that we are in now. So what you just saw there was a clip from a, 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 a conversation with the Prime Minister in Tobago last year on, on the day that the, the advertisement for this ferry that appeared in the newspaper. So the opposition is, is claiming that there was no process and Nitko will, will address the process. They was, they're saying that there's, there was no advertisement out for proposals and we will show you today and give you the dates that these appeared in the newspaper. What is astonishing, though, is that every time the, the, the government tried to fix the sea bridge, the opposition tried its best to ensure that it cannot be done. And I was wondering before, how come the opposition was saying this was a manufactured crisis? Today, I can put the, 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 the pieces of the puzzle together. And that is why I pointed out to you in 2013, a decision was taken by the then board under the previous government that we should fire Bay Ferries. And they put nothing in place. So that is where the crisis started, with the firing of Bay Ferries, the decision to fire Bay Ferries. And today, when we are about to, to, to have the, the second phase of our plan in place, the opposition has come out against this, this plan and making all kind of accusations that NITCO will address procurement issues is a surprise um, move and things that we can prove to you that this is not true. But what this is doing, it is, it is making it very difficult for NITCO and the Port Authority and by extension this country to attract the sort of companies that will want to do business with us. The opposition is hell-bent on damaging the name and the reputation of international companies. And if we continue to go down this road, very soon, nobody will want to do business with us. We saw what happened with Sandals. I have had complaints from international parties who said that they do not want to have anything to do with the port of Port of Spain. 
The reason we have to get this vessel now is simple. The spirit has to come out and go into dry dock shortly. If we do not get a vessel now, we can find ourselves in a position where we will have one vessel, the Galleon Passage, operating on the sea route. Vessels have to come off every year to go into dry dock. That is the international specification. And that is why the government decided that we should have three vessels operating. So at any point in time, you can have a consistent maintenance cycle. But you have spokespersons for the opposition who try their best to make allegations that there's some underhand deal going on. This process started in August of 2018 with an ad in the newspaper for proposals. Nitko will speak about the evaluation process and how they went about recommending this vessel to the cabinet and where we are at now. So I, I'd, I'd stop here for now and ask Nitko to address their process and how they recommended this vessel to us. Thank you. Okay. The process began in July 2016, um, July 26, 2018, when Nitko was advised by cabinet that they required this um, procurement of this vessel. And that was our marching orders. In response to that uh, mandate from cabinet, we went about public procurement. And on the 23rd, 24th, 26th of August, we placed ads in the Trinidad Express. And we have copies of those ads here. All the ads in the Trinidad Express, we let you have this when we leave. And we also place ads in the news the 23rd, 24th, 26th. All the copies are here. So that began our procurement process. Because we understand it's very difficult to get boats, we didn't have a short procurement process. Even though the ads were placed on the 23rd of August, we didn't ask for them to be, um, for the tenant to close until the 26th of October to get sufficient time for all the peoples that were interested to actually submit their proposal. So tenders did not close until the 26th of October, 2018. Now, this process is still ongoing. So there's very limited information I can tell you because this is an ongoing process. What I will say to you at this point in time, five Boats came in from three tenderers, of which the Jean de la Vallette was one. The Jean de la Vallette is the boat that is old, that's 10 years. Every other boat was significantly older. The, the, what I would call the preferred tender, which is Virtue Ferries, satisfied all the criteria, and the criteria were listed in our, our ads. Um, there's a negotiation process going on there with the, with the preferred tenderer, and con the contract is, I am hoping at this stage, still going to be finalized. We, we talk about the boat like if the boat does not exist. This is, this is what the boat looks like. Eh? This is the boat uh, that is coming to if we get that contract finalized. This is the type of boat that we want to be servicing Tobago. It's a 10-year-old boat. If, if just per chance there's an upper, uh, a maintenance issue, this is a lease. They will deal with the lease. Um, but this, this affords everything that can get our sea bridge in, in the sort of condition we wanted it. And this is what we may be on the brink of not having. Um, as soon as a contract is awarded, NITCO will inform the public as to the preferred tenderer and any other queries that may be um, put forward to NITCO. But as I said, this is an ongoing process, and at this point in time, the preferred tenderer is um, Virtue Ferries. All right. 
So, members of the media, you have heard from me, you have heard from the chairman of NITCO as to the process used. So there was a process. If there are any questions from the media, if there are any questions from the media, we would um, be more than willing to entertain those questions at this point in time. As a tender from a company, Virtue Ferries, there is nothing at this stage that warrants NITCO not to enter into contract with Virtue Ferries. But, Ms. Farmer, with all due respect, Mr. Portella's name will obviously tarnish, will obviously tarnish the operations of the boat, the boat, the name of the boat, obviously. I mean, a person is innocent until proven guilty. Precisely. Right? But, I mean, it's me, not looking me, good on the part of NITCO. No, me, no, no. Me, it's just, very... No, let me, let me, let me yeah. answer this in one thing. NITCO deals with the legality of something, not the concept of something. There is nothing illegal in the contract that NITCO is about to enter into with Virtue Ferries. And that's a fact. Um, let me let me just endorse what the president said. We cannot just take decisions on how it will look. Right here in this country, we have people in front of the courts or with similar allegations who have been getting hundreds of millions of dollars in contract from the state. from 2010 till now. But there's a process, and you are quite correct in saying that everyone is innocent until proven guilty. So, is it that everybody who is before the court, the states, must not do business with them. Is that what you're saying? I would really like an answer for that from you. I, you know, I answer all your questions. You don't answer none of mine. Did NITCO send a technical team to inspect and evaluate the vessel? Of course we did. NITCO sent a team in, to check on the operations of the boat. Now, you have to remember, this is a lease boat. And I'm going to ask the chairman um, just to supplement this answer in a while. Nitco, Nitco had the experience of the Alliance Passage as its leaser. And there were certain things we wanted to be very sure that we got under control. In particular, the ramp how the ramp and the berthing structures were going to operate in Tobago and in Trinidad. We sent our chairman, who is a competent structural engineer, so yes, there's a technical team that went to do our business, and it's based on that that we are now designing new ramps, etc. We also sent the port chairman, who is involved in the operations on the port, and I will ask him to comment now on some of his findings. As, as was indicated, uh, the chairman of NITCO and myself visited with Virtue Ferries. Our objective was to 
see the state, the condition of the vessel, and take a look at the operations. How the vessel is operated, what are those unique things that can affect us? Because the lesson over time that we have learned is simply this. Vessels have to fit the ports that you want them to operate in. It's easier if you have a vessel that can fit directly into your port, as we learned from Galleon's passage, uh, as opposed to trying to uh, refit your port to, to fit the vessel. So there were some things that we were particularly interested in. Given the, the experience of the Galleon's passage, we had to be concerned about the ramp, of the, uh, the landing of the ramp on the, on the, the key side. And we learned some, there were some good lessons coming out of that. The Jean de Valette is a little higher than the Spirit and also the Galleon's Passage. So the length of the ramp is in, had, we, had to, we had to take that into consideration in terms of what the angle of, of, of landing would be in terms of safety for vessels coming off. As a result of that, there's construction that we now have to do to receive that ramp on the, on, the, um, on the jetty when it comes here. Initially, we thought we may have been able to use the existing ramps that we have, but that will not be so. We, we can't do that because we cannot adjust those ramps because those ramps have been used for the specifications for the new build vessels coming in. So we can't move, we can't change that now. Those are the specifications then. So the ramps, that, the vessels that are coming are coming with their, their ramps, a stern ramp and a port ramp, which we're fortunate about, actually. So operationally, what we found was that they, we had to do some work to on the ramp, on the port, key side, sorry, to receive the ramps from the vessels to load and discharge the passengers and vehicles. We, where we are right now, actually, is that in Port of Spain, we'll be using the stern ramp, and in Tobago, we'll be using the port side bow ramp to be able to do that. Uh, operationally, as well, in terms of the, 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 the state of the vessel, it was a pleasure to look at. After 10 years, uh, the, the condition that the vessel was in was certainly very, very impressive. So, so that brought a, a question then uh, that we needed to look into, and that was, how were they able to do that, to keep that vessel in, the, in those, that particular condition over that period of time while doing basically the same thing that we were doing, and using one vessel doing that run all the time? And it was very interesting from a, 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 a maintenance point of view, is that their model of maintenance was one that we uh, don't use here, we, I don't think we ever used it, and that simply was, that the manufacturer of the engines of those vessels actually are on contract to maintain the vessel. So they have no, they have already paid for the cost for parts. We don't have, we, right now we're scrambling to get money to get parts. But the thing about it is, in their situation, to maintain the vessel for them, the manufacturer provides parts because they're already paying for that. Now, of course, there's a cost associated with it, but that, that's, that's one of the things that, that we learned uh, um, from, the, from, the, from the visit. So the issue was the, the maintenance uh, piece that we got in terms of the model that can be, can be utilized. While in this particular case it doesn't affect us directly, but we can certainly learn for our other vessels because this one is coming as a, as a wet lease, so to speak. Um, that's about it for, 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 for now. Mr. Alexander, prior to inspecting this vessel, how many vessels have you inspected before? Me? Yeah. None. So you would say that you're not a marine expert? Not at all. I didn't is go Mr. there to... Is I, Mr. George a marine expert? I, so the well, technical well, team well, comprises well, of just you and Mr. George? Hold a minute. Hold a minute. Your question's coming in rapid fire. Let me answer your questions. I am not a marine engineer. I didn't go there to, to do a marine inspection of a vessel. I went there to see how, the, how a vessel was operating. And as far as Mr. George is concerned, the president of NITCO already said that Mr. George is a structural engineer, which spoke to handling the engineering for developing and constructing the ramps to receive the ramps from the vessels. 
So, um, Ms. Ms. Palmer, does Mr. George Palmer, does Mr. George have marine expertise, and has he inspected vessels before? Mr. George is not required to have marine expertise because in our tender, we ask for the boat to have certificate of that expertise done on it already, and it's already classified and it's in the um, tender document here, and you can see that here by um, DNB. So anything to do with the structure, the stability. Um, anything to do with that a marine expert is required to do has already been certified. That was not the intent of the trip because we have that certification. So NITCO did not send its own marine engineer? We don't to need to send a marine engineer. We have a qualified um, agency that gives us a class in order to operate in Trinidad to be a a boat has to be class certified and we have that. Wasn't the ocean flower also given certificate to I operate? I can't speak about the ocean flower, sir, ma'am. One more question. Um, Ms. Alexander, why did you feel the need to write the minister directly to inform him that you were going to Malta to inspect this vessel? Because the chairman of a board needs to advise the minister when they'll be out of the jurisdiction. Have you done this before whenever you flew? Yes, I did. According to some uh, reports I saw on the internet, the vessel was involved in a um, collision a couple of years ago, a few years ago, uh, where it's, um, and there was also in 2016 where the engine wasn't, had problems and it wasn't able to service the, the operations between Malta and Sicily. Was any evaluation done of the engine to make sure it, was, it is currently working up to par? Uh, to be a little more specific in terms of the incidents that you're talking about. The boat crashed in 2017. In 2015, they, the boat shut down. I wasn't able to work. So was any evaluation done with respect to these incidents to see if these issues were resolved? Well, the only issue that we are aware of is the, when the vessel came into contact with a, with a key. A key side. There was no requirement for engine assist. Uh, evaluation done. But again, we didn't go there to do en engine evaluations. Hold on a minute, Mr. Gavin. Was any evaluation yeah. done with respect to sea conditions? I mean, what is the sea condition between Malta and Sicily? Because our sea bridge has very, you know, um, rough waters. Was any evaluation done with respect to sea conditions? From a passenger point of view, the uh, passage between Sicily and, uh, and Malta that the vessel runs, is very similar to ours here. Very, very similar. And I'm giving you that from a passenger operations and a passenger comfort uh, perspective. And the, 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 the vessel actually is, is designed slightly different to the spirit to be able to increase passenger comfort because the, as, as this, if you look at the vessel, the tunnel height is higher than the spirit, which enables it to deal with higher seas in a much more comfortable uh, manner for the passengers. Yeah. Based on the new, uh, Stephen, based on the newspaper, newspaper article we saw yesterday, and there were two issues that were claimed. One was that the vessel had an accident, and two that there were warranty issues. Are those the ones you're speaking of? Okay. The first incident happened in 2015. The vessel hit the pier in Italy, uh, a slight damage to the front of the vessel, and that was repaired. The vessel went back to Malta. It and was repaired. It took four days for repair. That was the only incident that it had. It was a minor incident, and all our vessels, for instance, Galleon Passage, we've hit our pier here already. The other incident with the warranty issue, they had an issue with the manufacturer, Austel. That issue was a weld issue, and Austel had it on several vessels. The particular issue that they had there, there were issues with the weld, and it was an automatic weld that Austel used, and had to be corrected. Virtue Ferry filed a loss of profit uh, action against 
Austin. The repairs were completed over time, as were done with other vessels, not by virtue but other companies. The Austin CEO at the time resisted paying the request made by Virtues. Virtues went to arbitration. Then last year, Austin, new CEO, agreed with Virtues and they settled the matter out of court, an amicable settlement, and paid Virtues for the loss of profit. The repairs were done over a period of time and they were all completed. Those were the only two incidents we know of the vessel. Just to add, in the last um, 10 years of operation, this vessel has operated per year 1,006 trips average and passengers almost 300,000 per year. So, and they operate daily trips and three times a week. 52 nautical miles, so at, at a speed of 34 knots. And, and that's information that can be verified at any point. Any further okay. questions? Sure. In, 20, in 2015, I should say, their normal dry docking. In 2015, they did their dry docking, and that took approximately four weeks. Uh, that was completed in 2015. This is right now, for instance, the, the boat is in dry dock, and they have brought up some of the dry docking issues before the vessel comes here, even though it was not uh, scheduled uh, the, t the time for the normal schedule. Morning. You mentioned there were three tenders. I'm just wondering, now we heard that the vessel was 10 years old and compared to others which were older. I'm just wondering if you could provide the names of the other tenders and, and if not, the, um, some more specifications on the boat, the other boats, just for comparison. Limited, um, some limited information because, as I said, the process is ongoing. The five um, vessels that were brought in, um, Terrajet, Paros Jet, Megajet, um, Champion Jet, and the Jean de la, Vette, de la Valette. Three were catamaran, three are catamaran, and two are monohull. Um, we asked for catamaran um, vessels, so two were immediately excluded, and our evaluation process took place on the remaining three. And on that basis, we decided to, to go ahead. I don't have the ages here um, of, of the... Um, 19 of the, and 22. The, did you have them there? Nine, 900. Okay. 19 years and They're 19 years, 22 years, yeah. and uh, the last one I think was 23 years. They're all significantly older than the 10 year vessel. Minister, I'm just wondering from a communication standpoint, just to go back to the, the first question that was raised with the controversy surrounding um, the head of the company that was chosen. Um, does the government think that they should have been the one to declare when they made that announcement so when it eventually does? become a topic of conversation then that we, we, we would have heard it from the government. Um, I don't know I don't know that, that the government could make an announcement to judge someone. Um, at the end of the day the president did indicate that we're in the final process of uh, settling this this uh, contract um, and once they, they, that, that is settled the government did indicate on several occasions that there is a process going, ongoing. I don't think the, the government is in a position to go and, and look at every director and say to the, the population that we are, this director is XYZ. We have signed in a contract with Virtue Holdings. We did a due diligence on Virtue Holdings, and that is what we are concerned about at this point in time. 
I, again, I'm telling you, there are people in front of the courts in this country going back for years, going back 2002, 2003. You don't go out and every contract you sign and say, well, the director or this director of that company is so and so. That, that is just not a process. I, I, I clearly articulate the, the, because of the politics and the type of politicians we have in Trinidad, they will go out and look to find something. I am now putting together the pieces to understand why the opposition was continually saying this is manufactured. And I'm thinking now it was probably manufactured in 2013. And now that we are about to fix it, they're ensuring that it is not fixed. I think their, their sole purpose is to go out there and continue to damage companies that wants to do business. If companies have questions to answer in the court, they have to answer the questions in the court. I'm not here to defend anybody or anything like that. What, I, what we are here to do is to ensure that if we sign a contract with, some, with a company, that the company delivers on that contract and, and we, are, we are operating within the law. This has nothing to do with anybody, and it, uh, this has nothing personal to do with anybody. And that is why I found it very strange that some of the people who were commenting, some of the political commentators, were saying a secret deal. They never heard anything about it. You carry that in your newspaper. But in your said newspaper, this process was advertised. So if somebody had taken the time to go back and say, well, you're saying that this was never advertised, but look, it was actually advertised in my newspaper. And you can go back. I went last night and, 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 and Googled all the statements that I made. And that's how I came up with this one in the, in the Prime Minister conversation and several others that I as minister made saying that, look, we have a process. We have a tender out there. Very soon we'll be, we, we, we are hoping to, to close that and have a vessel coming in here. There's nothing secret about what is going on here. If you look at the company, my information is one of the largest companies in the ferry business out of Europe. Nitco is telling me they have letters on their file complimenting this company from uh, other countries where they operate. And, and maybe I can ask the, 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 the Deputy Chair Nitco to, to, to comment on that. Yes, for instance, um, Virtue Ferries were contracted by the Australian government the Italian government, the American government, the Australian government, and the Chinese government. These are governments who have contracted with Virtue Ferries. They have given us that information. When we did our due diligence to understand the depth of uh, professionalism of, the, of, the, of this particular organization, that's what we came up with. Um, with respect to the vessel itself, the question was being asked about the competency of the two chairmen that went to deal with the issues of the vessel. What our concern was, we want to ensure that when the vessel gets here, it can be operational very quickly. So proactively, we sent the two chairmen. We sent the individuals who have been deeply involved with the operations of both uh, the port and the Galleon Passage. To ensure that when the vessel comes here, we will deal with all the issues. Remember, we just purchased two vessels, and the compatibility of the vessels with our shore equipment was very important. When they went there to look at the issues that they were effectively the experts on, um, we are now in the process of ensuring that the ability for the vessel to dock both in Port of Spain and in, and in uh, Tobago, that was our primary concern. With respect to the engines, with respect to the operational uh, capability of the vessel, uh, we also looked at that. This particular vessel is managed from a maintenance standpoint, and if you're familiar with maintenance of large organizations and large companies, what some companies do, and this particular company does that. That's why they have such a high level of reliability in the service. One of our concerns was the reliability of the service. The engines that are on this vessel are MTU engines, one of the best engines. In fact, it's the same engines that we have on the Galleon Passage 
and underwater taxis. The way they choose to maintain the vessels, they have the MTU engine uh, manufacturer uh, on, on contract that, manif that maintains their vessels. And they pay on a basis of uh, uh, the number of hours that it has to operate. So they have a very, very good system of running their vessels. It would be nice if we had that level. Uh, I've known several companies that use that method of maintenance. So as far as the reliability of the vessel, as far as the performance of the vessel, we also saw the performance of the vessel starting in 2010 to 2017, with the dates we have up to now. And the performance of the vessel, as far as the number of vehicles tra transported, as far as the number of passengers transported, and the consistency of that process. So those were the things that we looked at from a reliability standpoint to ensure that we would be able to provide a level of reliability to Tobago. One of the complaints were made by the uh, uh, Tobago Chamber was reliability. So from our standpoint, it's a very important act, element that we meet. That's why the two chairmen went there. Uh, uh, chairman George, he's a civil engineer, structural engineer, and was very involved in ensuring that the vessel alignment in Trinidad and Tobago, uh, we made sure that when the vessel comes here, we would have accommodated that. Sorry, so. There was one other um, finding that uh, gave us a lot more comfort as well. And it had to do with the ability of this vessel to carry heavy uh, cargo. So based on the specifications, uh, it can accommodate 40-foot uh, containers, some 16 of them. And what that immediately says to us is that that can, in fact, supplement, because one of the issues we have with the, the right now is if the cargo star doesn't sail, then heavy cargo can't go to Tobago. So we have some uh, capability now on this vessel, if this closes, to be able to supplement the heavy lift cargo, because we're able to see 40-foot containers driving on and off that vessel with very easily. So if there's any further questions, because... One question on that, the way we measure that is by the dead weight of the vessel. It was one of the considerations we used in selecting this vessel. The dead weight is 850 tons. That means it can, in fact, carry the load. Hi. Uh, good morning, Mr. Minister. Shane Superville from Newsday. On our side, note, uh, is there any updates with respect to the sale of the TNT Express? Have you all received a potential buyer or buyers? Okay. In terms of the TNT Express, we did put out uh, a tender for the sale of that vessel. Um, the port did actually get uh, two bids on that. However, a uh, decision has not yet been made um, as to the way forward because uh, they are about to formally send those bids to the ministry, then it will go to cabinet and a decision will then be taken as to the way forward with that. But definitely the TNT Express will not be coming back in service in Trinidad and Tobago. And for that reason, it is very important that a third vessel come into service because the spirit has to go into that dry dock sometime later on this year. And this is the reason why the government would have placed in the public domain the short term, the medium term, and the long term plan for the sea bridge. But clearly there are people out there who does not want to see an efficiently run sea bridge. I am looking at some of the commentators that you, the media, go into, and they're commenting about procurement. Some of these people are before the courts for procurement matters right now as we speak. Some have been expelled from certain groups or parties in Trinidad and Tobago pertaining to procurement. But you are going to them, as they know it all, and publishing that about procurement. I've heard this morning a former Minister of Transport made some comments, again, 
about the efficiencies of procurement under their tenure. And I just want to remind the population that the three vessels were procured, three sets of vessels. One is before the court, one is under heavy investigation, and one came in with no procurement whatsoever. It was purchased on a trip by the former prime minister. No procurement at all. The president of NITCO indicated to you the procurement that was used for this vessel. And I am sure it is within the, the tender rules of NITCO. And NITCO can defend whatever decision they take in their recommendations to the ministry, which would then go on to the cabinet for the final budget um, and so for the vessel. I'd just like to say on behalf of NITCO, the responsibility of sourcing the vessel, our concern is to ensure that we provide a credible, reliable service between Trinidad and Tobago. That is NITCO's concern. We met with the people in Tobago, met with the uh, chamber. We got from them a sense of their issues, a sense of their problems. We understand and we've seen all the newspaper articles with respect to the issues with the sea bridge. We are charged with the responsibility to solve those problems. When we went out looking for vessels, and vessels are very difficult to get, we, and you have copies of the specs that we sent out, and when it was sent out, and we will now be able to deliver a vessel shortly. The expectation is the last week in May. We look for a vessel that can provide a certain degree of comfort, a certain degree of pride, so when the individuals are traveling in the vessel, the things we were concerned about is the seaworthiness in terms of the comfort. Therefore, the length of the vessel was important. We understand the type of seas it is, so we made sure all of those things are taken care of. One very big issue for us was, in fact, how the vessels are maintained. We looked at their performance. We looked at how they operate. And both the chairman, the two chairmen, went to see those, that type of operation to make sure that we are chartering a vessel that is in line with what we are purchasing, the other two vessels that we are purchasing that will come sometime in mid-2020. Uh, uh, so we are concerned of providing a top-class service. We look for someone who is already providing a service, a quality service, and the results you will shortly see. We hope that the people of Tobago will realize that our concerns and our care are really for ensuring that we meet their expectation, we meet their needs, and we heard the problems that they had. We've identified with the specs we've done for the new vessels and the spec for this vessel, which was a temporary solution to support the two vessels uh, in service right now. So hopefully by the next big period where we travel, August, we'll have quality vessels to meet the needs of the people in Tobago, to ensure that we give them a comfortable vessel, a vessel that they will be proud of. In other words, we're looking at the quality of service that we provide to them. Thank you. All right, we'll just entertain one more question for the minister. Two more questions, please. I just have one. Minister has to go to cabinet, so we just. Okay. okay, so if we could get. I'll take the three questions because I really want you to ask and clarify and clear up everything that is in the public domain. So I'll take the three questions and yeah. then we close it off there. Okay, okay. Minister, let me shoot off. Um, just if, I'm just making an assumption here. Um, what if Mr. Portelli is charged? based on these charges before the court, um, have the Ministry of Works and Transport or NITCO taken into consideration what may happen in the long term with that lease if 
if the contract is signed, if, and if Virtue Holdings should dissolve at any point in time, if Mr. Portali is, is sentenced to jail? You know, it, that, that question is, I wouldn't say it's a strange question. It's not, if I have a lease with a company and something happens to that company and the company cannot function, the lease is broken. I don't lose anything because I'm not paying you in advance for any service. These are normal transactions in business. There's always a clause in all your contracts, even locally, if the company goes into bankruptcy and things like that. So there's always provisions in your lease to deal with things like that. This is not a unique case. We have matters in the courts in Trinidad and Tobago since 2002. Not only with directors who were questioned about things outside of the company that we're dealing with, with the actual company. So this is nothing new, this is nothing unique or anything. In all contracts, there are provisions to deal with things like that. And I am sure in this contract, like in every other contract, things like that can be dealt with if the matter arises. Second question. Yes, we. Yes, we have been working with uh, Haynes and Boons, which is a very reputable, qualified uh, firm out of the UK. Uh, they have been ha handling most of our maritime cases, including the helicopters. They, 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 are, they have been handling the, the cases for uh, the, the, the Coast Guard vessels that we have, working for national security, and working for us. They also work for us with the procurement of the new vessels. So they are very experienced in the maritime field, and they're a very reputable company. Unlike what happened before, where we hired a local company to sell vessels, procure vessels, and I don't want to go into further details because that is in front of the court at this point in time. But we are taking every step to ensure that whatever contract is signed, it is signed by very reputable, experienced companies in the maritime field. No, I, I, I can't go into the, the cost right now, the process is ongoing, and, and that will be uh, issued to the public once we have the figures. This government is not about hiding anything or secret deals or just springing anything on anybody. We have proven to you today that this conversation was in the public domain for quite a while, and that is why we get to virtually show you videos of myself speaking about it at a forum with the entire Tobago stakeholders, including the Chambers, the Hoteliers Association, everybody in Tobago. And I'm sure if you go through the archives, you'd see it in Parliament, it was said, and on political platforms. So we are not about hiding anything or doing anything that we cannot defend in the public. Third question. Um. I know you said that you can't divulge any costs right now because negotiations are ongoing, but is there like a budgeted estimate and how long would the lease, how long would be the duration of the, the lease? The lease is for one year with the option to renew for a further six months. The reason why it was requested that way is simply because it, keeping with the plan of the government the short term, which is operating right now, the Galleon Passage in the TNT spirit, the medium term, get a new vessel for at least for one year. The long term, sometime next year, we should have two brand new vessels. So it's all in keeping with the plan that we relate to the population as to the way forward for the sea bridge. And hopefully, we should never get back to where we were. Unfortunately, there are some people in this country who will do ev make every effort 
to ensure that we remain right there or go back to where we were. And this government, as a responsible government, will do whatever it takes to get us out of there. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I have to run off the cabinet, um, and I do hope that we would have given you all the information to correct the misinformation that is put into the public domain. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. Well, once Ms. Farmer is prepared to take the questions. And that was a press conference held by the Minister of Brakes and Transport, Rohan Sinanan, and the Minister of Communications, Stuart Young, as they seek to clarify issues raised in the public about the lease of the fast ferry from Malta, the Jardin.